Welcome into Steelers Talk. I'm your host, Jack Sperry, and today I am breaking down my official round one draft targets for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I got all my top guys, and then we're going to finish up today's show with my final top 20 big board for the Pittsburgh Steelers that I would have if I were Steelers GM Omar Khan. Before we get into today's action, make sure you click that thumbs up icon if you are as pumped for the draft as we are here at Chat Sports. We have been working tirelessly around the clock and ready for our extensive coverage of the 2024 NFL Draft. Really do appreciate all of your support. So if you want to help this video do the best that it can, all you got to do is click that thumbs up icon right now. All right, so now we're going to be talking about three tiers of players. And we're going to be talking about 12 players total that I think could be taken in round one that also had a top 30 visit, all right? Because Omar Khan keeps stressing the importance of top 30 visits. And I just don't really see the Steelers really drafting somebody that they didn't bring in on a top 30 visit, okay? So we got four players in each tier here, four players I'd be thrilled with, four players I'd be fine with, and then four players I'd be disappointed with. So let's start with the thrilled tier. Number one for me is Troy Fontenot out of Washington. All right, this guy's got pers uh, uh, versatility, positional versatility. He can play center. He can play guard. He can play tackle on both sides. And right now, uh, that's actually not the right player five, Coop. Just go to the next one, yeah. So Troy Fontenot out of Washington. I have him at ranked as my number three offensive tackle in this class. He's actually fantastic. The arm length is what you look for at th over 34-inch arms. The pass protection, the technique, the balance, the hand placement, the intelligence. It's all beautiful on film, and I love watching him pass protect. All right, and also you got that versatility. So if you want to play him at center, I think he could play center. He's got the athleticism to do that. Now the cons, the size at 6'4", 317 pounds, not exactly the biggest guy in the world at the position. So, you know, could he struggle a little bit against true bull rushes in the league? Sure. All right, but, and then also the injury concern. A couple of teams flagged him for a knee injury uh, concerns here. So it's definitely possible that Fondo uh, might have some knee issues heading into the league, but I do have a true Round one grade on him, and if Fontenot falls to number 20, I think that he's going to be the pick. And with this new development, with his knee and all this different stuff around uh, injury concerns with him, I definitely think it's possible that he is sitting there at number 20, and the Pittsburgh Steelers definitely have a history of taking guys with this kind of injury history. We saw it last year with Darnell Washington and Corey Trice Jr. It wouldn't shock me at all if Fontenot's high on their board, and if he's there at 20, he ends up being the pick. Now, shout out your guy down there in the comments section. Who do you want the Steelers to take in round one? Who are you hoping falls to number 20 for the Pittsburgh Steelers within reason here, all right? So pin, this is going to be the pinned comment on today's show. YouTube's going to throw you an ad break here in just a couple of seconds. When that happens, take advantage of that time. But let me know who you want the Steelers to take in round one. I think the number two guy that I think uh, will most likely be available at number 20, and I'd be thrilled to get, is Amarius Mims out of Georgia. Now, the big knock on him is that he just didn't really play a whole lot of college football, right? And we all know how stacked that Georgia roster is, and it wasn't really until this last year where Mims really got an opportunity to start, and then he got hurt, all right? So he had to wait a long time to even get on the field, and then when he got his opportunity – he got hurt, and he didn't play a whole lot this past year, so he just doesn't have a lot of film. But here's the thing, guys. When you watch that film, as, as a little number as it is, it's awesome. All right, He is an awesome player. He's got incredible athleticism, great size, arm length. When you watch him on film, and this goes back to even two seasons ago when he had an opportunity to play in the college football playoff, uh, he looked fantastic absolutely just dominating people in the run game, shutting guys down in pass protection. This guy looks like an, a, a starting right tackle in the league already on film. Now, you're going to have to get over that he didn't play a whole lot, and that's a small sample size, but man, this guy is a fantastic prospect. I would trust him to be the Steelers' day one right tackle, and I'd be thrilled to have Amarius Mims on this football team. Number three, Talise Fuwanga from Oregon State. Uh, you know, he might be a guard. You know, he needs to prove that he can really handle the speed and bend of NFL pass rushers uh, off the edge. Uh, but he's got good technique relatively. He's, he's a mauler in the run game. I think that the Steelers would love to have Fuanga 
as a true menacing run blocking right tackle. They had moved Broderick Jones over to the left side of Fuwanga is the pick. Now, is he going to be here at number 20? I think there's a lot of teams that really like Fuwanga's game. Cough, cough, Los Angeles Chargers. So we'll see what they end up doing. But I would love Fuwanga. Here is the Pittsburgh Steelers right tackle. I'd be thrilled to have him. So now why would I, now you guys might notice here that my top three guys are offensive tackles. Now why is that? Why don't I have a center? Why don't I have a, a corner? Why don't I have a wide receiver? Plain and simply, guys, I think finding a day one starter at offensive tackle is essential for the Pittsburgh Steelers this year because I don't trust Dan Moore Jr. anymore. I mean, we've given him a bunch of opportunities. He hasn't lived up to it. I think that he's going to be a good swing tackle, but if I'm the Pittsburgh Steelers, I'm looking for a starting offensive tackle that I can plug and play right away, and those three guys that I just listed, I trust to do that. But if you can't get those top three guys, you can go ahead and get Graham Barton out of Duke to be your next center. Now, Barton has played tackle there at Duke, and he's been a pretty good college tackle, but the arm length and a couple different factors here I think is going to limit his ability to play tackle at the next level. Most people think he's going to be an interior offensive lineman. He has uh, experience playing guard and center, and I do think if you draft him at number 20, I'd be super happy to have him as the next center of the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's super athletic, really fluid. He plays with great awareness, and he's also really strong too. So you're not going to be able to bully him with a bull rush and get to the quarterback. I really like this guy's game, and he's the only center prospect that I would be thrilled to get at number 20. I think he's a perfect fit for Arthur Smith's run scheme because you need a center that can move and get to the second level. Barton does all that exceptionally well, so I would love to have Barton as the pick at number 20. Now coming up here, some less desirable draft targets that the Steelers have talked to throughout this prospect throughout this process here. I'll get into the prospects I'd be fine with and then the prospects I'd be disappointed with here coming up. But before we get into that, I want to tell you about today's sponsor at Fanatics. And if you want to own a piece of Steelers draft history today, go to chatsports.com slash DH24 to get an official Steelers draft hat, officially licensed by the National Football League, Right now, again, chatsports.com slash DH24. Got to say, guys, I like the design this year with the gray and then the yellow on there. It's very industrial, very blue collar, in my opinion. That definitely fits the vibe of Pittsburgh and, and, and the blue collar nature of this city. So you can go to chatsports.com slash DH24. I'll put the link to that in the comments and description so you can let fanatics know that we sent you. So now I got four players in the players I'd be fine with, starting with Cooper DeGene out of Iowa. Uh, the one need that you could really say that the Steelers desperately need right now, in my opinion, is slot cornerback. Because you've got uh, Dante Jackson and you've got Joey Porter Jr. Uh, and, you know, that's fine. But you need three corners in the modern NFL. And right now the Steelers don't have one. Chandon Sullivan left in free agency, right? Same thing with Elijah Riley. So you need a slot corner, and I think Cooper DeGene would be an excellent day one starting corner uh, in the slot. So if the Steelers are looking to fill that right away, I think DeGene is definitely a dark, dark horse here. Now, I would rather get an offensive lineman, whether that be the four guys we mentioned in my thrilled category or somebody else. Uh, but, you know, I look at DeGene, and I think that he's got a really good uh, a profile here as a slot corner that can absolutely wreck football games. And I do think that this is a gaping need for the Pittsburgh Steelers that they just don't have an answer for right now. They're going to have to find an answer for it at some point in the draft or free agency after the draft. And right here, DeGene, I think, would plug that hole right away. Then I'll go to Ladd McConkey, the wide receiver out of Georgia. I'd be fine with a wide receiver. And along with McConkey, I'd be fine with A.D. Mitchell out of Texas as well as Xavier Leggett out of South Carolina. I think that all of these guys are really good players. And this is definitely a team that needs another big-time wide receiver. I think all three of these guys fit that bill, can be legit number two receivers to George Pickens' is number one this year. Uh, and you can kind of combine the talents of these guys with Pickens to form one of the best young wide receiver duos in football. So, yes, I would rather have an offensive lineman, but if they took a high-end wide receiver, I wouldn't be too sad about it. Uh, but I would probably save it for later, all right? There's a lot of really good wide receivers in this class that fit what you want to do. So in my opinion, take the offensive lineman in round one, save wide receiver to for round two or round three. Now, for more content from me on social media, you can find me at Jack underscore Sperry on X or at SpareDog.Football 
on IG. I post on there every single day. My final NFL mock draft will be on my Twitter and Instagram Thursday morning before the NFL draft. So if you want that content, again, I'm at Jack underscore Sperry on X and at SpareDog.Football on Instagram. Definitely appreciate all of your support. So now the guys that I'd be disappointed in here, we'll go to Nate Wiggins. Uh, cornerback out of Clemson. I'm not sure if he's ready to be a dominant corner in the league right away. Now, maybe maybe I wouldn't be like super disappointed in this pick, but I definitely think there's better options than Nate Wiggins. He's really skinny. Uh, he's not super physical. Uh, and I think that he's a better fit in more of like the Fangio off coverage style of defenses as opposed to the Steelers that run a lot of man, a lot of press. He doesn't have the longest arms in the world. So he's just not a fantastic fit in my opinion here at the Steelers and I'd be relatively disappointed if Wiggins is the pick number 10 Jackson Powers Johnson out of Oregon uh he's got concussion issues guys I love the player uh, but you know he made he's not the best athlete in the world super strong player can move people at the line of scrimmage but you really have to be able to move and you have to get off really quickly in an Arthur Smith system not sure if Jackson Powers Johnson really fits that bill. And I'm not actually sure he's the best fit for the Pittsburgh Steelers as opposed to guys like Graham Barton or Cedric Van Prant or somebody else that moves a lot better than Jackson Powers Johnson does. And then when you add on to the fact that he's got the concussion issues in the past at that position where you're getting your head hit on every play, I'd be pretty disappointed if Jackson Powers Johnson ends up being the pick for the Steelers because of all the risk you take on with them. Then at number 11, I'd be disappointed with Tyler Guyton out of Oklahoma. Now, I get that some people are higher on Guyton because he's got long arms and he's a great athlete and, you know, he's a big body and he looks like an all-pro caliber tackle in the National Football League. Here's the rub, though. The Steelers need somebody that, needs, that can play right away. Guyton isn't that guy. He lost so many reps in the one-on-ones at the Senior Bowl. His balance is all over the place. The hand placement is all over the place. He's going to have to take a year before he is ready to be like a good starting tackle. Steelers need one right now. Tyler Guyton is not that guy, in my opinion. And if you take him and you start him, I think you're going to have a big hole in your offensive line. And then number 12, Zach Frazier. I have a round three grade on him. Love the tenacity, love the intelligence, love the technique, but the athleticism leaves something to be desired, and then the overall play strength, just because of how small he is, I'm sorry, man, he's a round three guy. I think he's a day one starting center, uh, but because he doesn't have the, the mass that you look for and the athleticism you look for in this type of run scheme, I would rather take him in round three as opposed to the round one buzz that he's been receiving. Now, some honorable mentions here. These are players that have not gotten top 30 visits with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, I will mention that the Alabama guys had dinner with the Steelers before their pro day, which Mike Tomlin and Omar Khan both attended. Okay, so that doesn't mean that they're not going to be picked. But J.C. Latham, I'd be very disappointed if he was the pick. Byron Murphy, I think there's bigger needs than defensive tackle in round one, even though he's a great player. I'd be fine with Terry and Arnold or Kool-Aid McKinstry as well. Now let me know down there in the comments section, who would you be upset with if the Pittsburgh Steelers took them in round one? I'd be upset with a number of players, Tyler Guyton, J.C. Latham, uh, a bunch of these players that I don't think are ready to be starting tackles in the league. I'd be disappointed with those guys. But let me know down there in the comments section how you're feeling. So now let's get to my Steelers big board without further ado here. Omar Khan and Mike Tomlin, they're going to have a list of 20 players on their desk on draft night. And one of those players, whoever's the highest on their board, is going to be the pick for the Pittsburgh Steelers at number 20. So listen, man. First couple names on this list are not happening, all right? But I think Michael uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be at the top of their list. Would be a fantastic add to this offense. Same thing with Roma Dunze out of Washington. There's been some trade-up rumors with the Steelers connecting uh, to Rome. Uh, they've met with him formally at the Combine, but I don't see the Steelers trading up for a wide receiver, and that includes Malik Neighbors, who I have at number three. If any of these guys fell to you at 20, they'd be the pick, but they're not. Uh, but you got to put them on the board. Number four, Joe All out of, uh, out of Notre Dame, offensive tackle. Number one offensive tackle on my board. He's fantastic, but like the three receivers above him, definitely not going to get past the top ten. Then we, got to Troy, then we go to Troy Fondo, our first guy that could actually fall to the Steelers at number 20. 
I love Fondo's game. I think he can play all five offensive line positions with great tenacity, intelligence, and technique. He's a great athlete, which fits this run scheme that Arthur Smith wants to run. I think Fondo's a perfect fit, and because he's had some injury flags here from some teams in the NFL, he may be falling to the Pittsburgh Steelers at number 20. Then we get to Marius Mims at number six. You guys know how I feel about Mims. I, I would feel comfortable starting him at right tackle to start his career week one in the NFL. Number seven, Grant Barton. Like I said, guys, great athlete, great overall fit for what the Steelers want to do along the interior here. I would be thrilled to have Grant Barton as the next center of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Then Talese Fuwanga there at number eight. I would take Barton over Fuwanga just because Fuwanga has some question marks in terms of his pass protection particularly against speed rushers, but I do like the overall profile, and I wouldn't mind it whatsoever if Fuwanga is the pick at number 20. Then Quinion Mitchell is my top corner. Uh, if you're not going to get one of those top offensive linemen, they don't fall to you, and Quinion Mitchell does, I think pairing him up with Joey Porter Jr. would make one of, if not the best, cornerback duo in football. Then we get to Terry and Arnold at number 10. A Bama product here. Really like his game. Can play in the slot. So if you want to play him in the slot right away and then move him outside whenever he's ready, I think that'd be a really, really good fit. Uh, so if all these tackles are off the board by pick number 20 and Arnold is still sitting there, which I expect him to be, I think the Steelers could pull the trigger for Terry and Arnold. But if Arnold's not there, then you get Cooper DeGene, who they brought in for a top 30 visit. They met with him twice at the Combine. They definitely have shown a lot of interest in DeGene. And I think specifically as like a Swiss Army knife chess piece on defense, I can play in the slot, can play safety, can play a little bit of outside corner. And if he puts on some weight, he might even be able to play a little bit of hybrid linebacker, all right? So he's super instinctual, great football player, uh, and he's a number 11 on my board. Then Alou Fashino, and the reason why Fashino is uh, a little bit lower on my board personally is because he's not a great run blocker, all right? He's a fantastic pass protector which is great, but the Steelers want their offensive line to be mauling run blockers, right? They want to prioritize the run game in this offense. Fashino doesn't really fit that bill, so there's other players I would take ahead of him, but I like his game overall, so if he's sitting here and all the top 11 guys are off the board, Fashino would be my choice. Then we get a run of wide receivers here, Adonai Mitchell out of Texas and Lad McConkey, number 13 and number 14. Overall, uh, probably unlikely that you get down the board this much on night one, but if all these guys are taken by pick number 20, uh, a wide receiver here does make sense. Number 15, Kool-Aid McKinstry. reason why Kool-Aid's a little bit lower is because he doesn't have the slot versatility that Cooper DeGene and Terry and Arnold bring to the table. So if it's going to be just an outside corner, uh, I'd probably put him a little bit lower on my big board. Same thing goes for Nate Wiggins out of Clemson. Uh, high upside, uh, but really, really, guys, he's, he, I'm not sure if he's a great fit for what the Pittsburgh Steelers want to do here. Number 17, Xavier Leggett out of South Carolina. He reminds me a lot of A.J. Brown. I think that Arthur Smith is going to have him very, very high on the Steelers draft board. And if he's there in round two, uh, expect him to be the pick at number 51 and maybe even a little bit of a trade up to go get him if he falls into round two. Brian Thomas Jr. out of LSU is number 18. I don't love uh, the, the motor in terms of run blocking with him, but he's definitely a deep threat down the field. And with a guy like Russell Wilson, that is definitely something that could be of value. My final two picks here, I've got some defensive tackles, Byron Murphy and Jerzon Newton. You're probably not going, to, you're not going into round one expecting these two guys to be at the top of your board by pick number 20. Uh, but if it does happen, defensive tackle, these guys would definitely be the best players on the board at that point if all 18 other players are off your board at that point. Now off my board entirely, guys like J.C. Latham out of, out of Alabama, who I see as an offensive guard. I do not think that he is somebody that can handle edge rushers, speed rushers in the NFL. Same thing with Tyler Guyton, who I think is more of a developmental player. Jordan Morgan, uh, you know, he's fine, but I'm not picking him at number 20. Jackson Powers Johnson has the concussion issues, and Zach Frazier, I don't think has the build of a round one center in the National Football League. That'll be it for today's show, guys. I know it was a little bit of a longer one today. It was a little bit of a beast, but thank you guys so much for sticking with me here. To the very end, make sure you click that subscribe button right now because tomorrow is my final Steelers mock draft of the 2024 draft season.